Well, to discuss this breakthrough a little more, I'm joined now by the ABC's environment reporter, Connor Duffy. Connor Duffy, I'm a Queenslander, but I hate cane toads. I've got a bit of a phobia there. So how is this poison actually going to be collected from the cane toads? And then how does it get used against the tadpoles? Well, at the moment, it's a very, very rough and ready process. As I understand it, the cane toad has a gland in its shoulder, which uh, scientists basically get permission from the, the various animal rights permissions that they need to do testing on animals, extract the poison, and squeeze it out of the cane toads. Um, you can yuck. see you're grimacing there. It is yes. a little yuck. Yeah, and then they, they put it onto a sponge or a slide and they effectively set a trap. And the young um, tadpoles and cane toads are attracted to it because each cane toad is capable of laying up to 30,000 eggs. Um, and cane toads are programmed to try and take out the competition, so to take out you know any other eggs that have been laid nearby, so they'll flock to that area. And the chemical signature for the cane toad is that poison. So the cane toads are drawn there to effectively cannibalise um, their not brothers and sisters, but their relatives. Uh, and the poison itself doesn't kill them, but what it does is traps huge numbers uh, of of them in a big areas. Or as I understand it, it's like moths to a flame; like they just absolutely right. flock to this area. So you heard um, Professor. Shine there saying that in some areas they've been able to totally eliminate them from small isolated areas. So the tadpoles are effectively destroyed themselves or they, no. they become they can't reproduce, is that how it works? No, well they're trapped there and then they have to be manually disposed oh, of. Oh I see. Um, but they're trapped and contained in the one area and then someone can come along and um, dispose of them then. Well Professor Shine was also saying that this may not eradicate cane toads but it could certainly um, diminish their numbers and, and are they hopeful that it could actually stop the spread for example into other parts of Australia? That's right. So, uh, most scientists think that it's just gone way too far to ever completely get rid of cane toads from Australia. But what they think this can do is get, you know, to be able to target very high conservation value areas and keep toads out of there. Um, it will be still be hard work. You know, it'll be labour intensive. As we mentioned, someone will actually have to come along and collect um, the cane toad tadpoles and then make sure that they're continuing the adult, continuing to kill the adults that are still alive. But they do think it will make a significant uh, dent on their numbers. And how much of this um, poison needs to be squeezed out of the t cane toad's shoulder to actually be effective and set the trap? How much of it do they Look, need? Look, from what I understand, um, this, you know, really is like moths to a flame, like uh, just a small amount of it. Um, it's such a strong chemical signature that small amounts of toads will flock to it. At the moment, it's still quite a labour intensive process. So there's work underway and an Australian Research Council grant has been awarded um, to this team involving also researchers from the University of Queensland to try and come up with effectively a pill that they could use, which would be much easier to mass produce and... Because I was going to ask, are they going to have to train volunteers, you know, people to collect the tadpoles, tadpoles to collect the poison and set these traps? Because it seems like a bit of a, as you said, a labour intensive, that's a pretty mammoth that's job. That's right, it will be. It'll be up to the toad, toad watch groups in um, various parts of the country to really take this on and local authorities, um, are, are presumably there, there could be a role for national parks and other organisations that are out in these remote areas all the time. But, um, and... This research has been published in a respected journal, but it still hasn't been widely applied in the field yet, so it'll need to overcome that hurdle to see that people can actually do this. Cane toads have been a pest for, for decades now. I mean, why did it take so long to figure out that they could actually be producing the very substance that could end up killing them? Well, they did know that uh, tadpoles were attracted, that's uh, only when they're quite young, to dead cane toads but they didn't know why and they didn't know that it was actually the poison itself that was attracting them and that's really what the breakthrough is with this research uh, so it really does give them you know the chance to be able to target really key areas like Kakadu parts of the Cape go in there and you know and presumably for land owners as well if they're prepared to do the work but um, mm -hmm. across the board it's sort of seen as a win in the battle against cane toads and Hopefully we'll see another win in the battle against cane codes tonight oh, in Sydney. Oh, hush your mouth just because you're wearing a blue shirt, you blue supporter. <laughs> All right, Connor Duffy, the ABC's environment and science reporter, thank you for joining me. Thanks very much.